In this video, I'm going to show you how you can quickly secure your application using the technology that IAR Systems brings to bear with C-Trust and ultimately Embedded Trust. This application that I have here is just a simple application that I want to secure. So let's pretend that this is the one I've been working on and I want to enable security. Because I have uh, C-Trust installed on this machine, I can go into Project, Create New Project, and one of the options is to create a secure boot manager. When I click OK, it's going to ask me where do I want to save this, and I'm going to create a secure boot manager project inside of a directory in my application. Once this creates the Secure Boot Manager application, you'll notice that it creates a couple of IPCF files, which is IAR Project Connection, which is a series of XML files that give the names and locations of all the source code that's needed to build the Secure Boot Manager. In order to build this Secure Boot Manager, I need to give it just a little bit more information. I need to tell it exactly which device that I'm using, which in this case happens to be an STM32 F29II. And since I'm going to print out some information on the terminal I.O. window, I'm going to use buffered terminal output so that it will print an entire line of text at one time and make it a little bit faster. The next thing I need to do is go into security and I can enable security and create a new security context. The security context is a bucket of settings that give the policies and procedures that I want to do to secure this particular device. I'm going to use a very simple one and be it to be able to secure this particular device. When you have C-Trust, the only option you have is to do production control and IP protection, which means you can encrypt your code and you can make sure that you don't do, that a contract manufacturer does not do overproduction of your goods. If you have embedded trust installed on your machine like I do, you can also imbue each one of the devices with a unique identity and use cloud services. You can also customize your security context much more if you have embedded trust, but we're going to use just a very simple one for this demonstration. The name of the context that I'm going to use is just simply my context and the location that we're going to do is inside of the same spot where we're going to store the SBM, but you can put it anywhere you want to. I am not going to use a unique ID because again, uh, C-Trust does not support using unique IDs. You need embedded trust to be able to do that, but it does support full encryption for updates. And I'm not storing the update in an external flash, so we'll just go ahead and create this. Now that I've created this, it's going to ask, do you want to use the security context now? And the answer is yes. I can also edit a few settings, and the settings I'm going to edit are to give you a little bit more information so that you can see the Secure Boot Manager actually executing as it's booting up. And so once I do this, I'm pretty much ready to download and debug. I just need to switch my debugger to using the iJet, and then I'm ready to build. So I'm just going to tell it to do a download and debug because it will do the building as well as the download and debug. There's about 50 or 60 files in this particular secure boot manager, so it'll take about 10 or 15 seconds for it to be able to build all of the source code files. And once it does, it'll initiate the download session and do the debug. And here we begin flashing, and very shortly it starts up the debug session. Now that I have the debug session started, I can go to View Terminal I.O. and I can expand this window just a little bit to be able to read the uh, SBM booting up. So you can see that the boot failed because there's currently no image to run. We just have a secure boot manager. So now our device has been provisioned, which means it has the secure boot manager and the certificates and keys that are necessary for it to authenticate any firmware load. We simply switch back over to our original application. And now we go into that application's project options and we go to security. We enable security and provide it the location of the secure, same security context that we used in our secure boot manager. 
and this is validated to make sure that it's for the same device and once it is we can provide it an application version number and then we just click OK and that's all we have to do now when we build the application what we'll see at the very end of the build is that it's going to master the application which means it's going to Sign, encrypt and then sign the encrypted upload package such that when we do a download and debug it uploads the encrypted package to the update area in the device. And once the debugger starts up we can then go into uh, the terminal I.O. window in order to see that the application has already indeed been bootloaded and it took about two seconds and this can be adjusted to make it a little bit faster if you play with some of the clocks on the secure boot manager but as you can see it's very easy to enable security and now the application developer even though they're working in a secure workflow is not really cognizant of it because they're able to do their debugging as they normally do from from within the application. Thanks for watching this video and I hope you found it informative.